Have you ever looked at drawings that have incredible detail and a really fine finish and wondered, how the heck do they do that? Well, like any craft, it's about really understanding your tools and how to use them properly. Today, we're going to look at the most basic drawing tool, your pencil, and how to sharpen it properly. So you'll notice that my pencils are sharpened differently. I have them sharpened to a very, very long, fine point, and there's a reason for that. First of all, having them at a very fine point like that actually gives you a lot more control over the end result. You can get a lot more detail, you can get in there and do very, very fine work that you couldn't with a regular sharpened pencil. You also don't have to sharpen your pencil as often. But actually sharpening your pencil like this changes the way that you draw and for the better. So let's get started. First, I'm going to take my pencil and I've got my utility knife. It's a pretty strong, sturdy utility knife. And I'm going to go back about an inch or an inch and a half from my pencil. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wood and begin to scrape it off away from the lead. And I'm doing it in a certain way. I'm not gouging. I'm careful not to gouge into the lead. What I do is I go down and then out in order to just basically pull the lead, the wood away from the lead. And that's my objective here. So that's what I'm gonna do. And all I'm trying to do is expose my lead. But I do not wanna gouge the lead because it'll weaken the lead and it'll have a tendency to make it break. So very quickly, I can expose maybe about an inch or so of my lead like this. Then what I'm going to do is take some sandpaper. Now this is about a 220 grit. You can go maybe about a 150, but anything less than that, it's gonna to be too coarse. And basically what's going to happen as you sharpen your pencil against it, it'll just chew your pencil apart and your lead will just disintegrate. If it's much finer than this, if it's a 400 grit or whatever, you'll be sitting there sanding all day long. I find that really uh, 150 to a 220 grit is really the optimal in order to sharpen your pencils. So I take a little sheet of this paper, not very big. It's big enough basically to sit in the palm of my hand in a way that I can curl it. And what happens is my, is my hand acts as a kind of a soft cushion for when I'm sanding my lead so it won't snap. So I'm going to put the sandpaper in the cup of my hand and then what I do is I take my pencil lead like this then near the edge I'm simply going to run my lid back and forth and while I'm doing it I'm twisting it around like this so that what I'm doing is I'm sanding the sides but I'm getting it even on all the sides and I just keep going with a little more pressure on the front rather than you know, absolutely flat, because then you're just gonna end up sanding the sides down. So I put a little more pressure on the front and I just sand this thing back and forth, back and forth. And eventually, what will happen is that you will end up with a beautiful sharp point like this. And this is exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for this kind of a sharp point. I want it needle sharp. And that's what will allow us to actually get into the weave of the paper. So why is it important to have your pencil sharpened this way? Well, the main reason is, is that if your pencil is just sharpened like you would normally have it, the tendency is to actually hold the pencil the way you learned back in school when you were learning how to write. And what you end up is you hold it way back down here and you can really only get a very limited range of motion when you do that. I mean, I'm sort of moving my arm and that's about as far as I can go because everything is bound by pretty much, you know, my fingers and that's, that's it, that's as far as I'm gonna go. And it sort of has a tendency to you know, cramp our style, quite literally. But when we have our pencil sharpened this way, first of all, you, ca you can't even hold it like that. It's, you, you, you physically can't do it. You're, you're, you're too close to, down the lid and it's, it's, it's physically impossible to do it. And so you are forced by default to hold the pencil further back, which is actually the way you should be holding it when you're drawing. This is the better way to draw for a whole host of reasons. So by holding your pencil further back, there's a couple of things that are happening here. First of all, you can get a much larger range of motion. Just right off the bat, you draw differently. You can suddenly, your initial bars can be infinitely longer. 
and it actually what it does is actually give you a lot more control. First of all, in terms of you know the, the size of your, your strokes. But because the lead is so delicate and thin, you can't just you know hold it really hard and sort of force the lead. You have to deal with it in a much more delicate fashion. And it allows you to have a lot more control over your drawings. And you can get in there and do very, very, very fine work by with the tip. You can you can control the pressure a lot better. You can just can control everything about the way that this lead performs compared to like a normal kind of lead so much better. Holding your pencil much further back is actually the better way to draw. Like I quite often hold my pencil like six, eight inches back. Like this to me is a, is a very sort of uh, comfortable way to hold my pencil in order to get the results that I want. So sharpening your pencil this way actually does change the way you draw and it changes it for the better. If you found this video helpful, please feel free to leave a comment below or you can like, share or subscribe. Thanks for watching and remember, stay creative. This is your time to express yourself. See you in the next video. Be sure to visit my website from the link below where you can download my free studio setup guide. You can also take my free introductory course called Getting You Started with Realistic Drawing.